Hello everyone, Natalabs here, and today I'm going to be showing how you can do a little bit of molecular modeling in Blender. So it's actually very simple, and um, if you know how to use like the basics of any 3D program, it should you should be able to pick up uh, the skill very easily. And the question is, why would you want to pick up the skill, and why wouldn't you use a molecular modeling kit? Uh, the main reason you wouldn't want to use a molecular modeling kit is because uh, sometimes you don't have enough atoms in there. I don't know, but the thing is, you can do it in Blender, and I found a way, and it was really tricky. Okay, so. Let's say you start with a blank uh, sphere scene, nothing in here. Uh, so you're going you're gonna to click Shift A to add, I don't know, a sphere, probably for your atom, so UV sphere. Uh, you can leave the default settings, it uh, doesn't really matter. If you want to add a bond, you would go Shift A to add, and then cylinder, right? Uh, so then you would scale it down by pressing S. So I'm pressing the S key to scale it down, and then I'm going to rotate it on it doesn't matter X or Y, but don't rotate it on the Z axis because that doesn't do anything for you. It's just rotating around itself. Uh, but if you rotate it on the uh, X or the Y axis, it will actually do something. You can also type in a number to get it to a certain value. So over there, I typed in 90 and I'm just gonna scoot it along over to the side. You can see over here, I have my bond, but I, I want it to be a little bit longer or stretched out. You can just click S to scale on the X axis. So that would be S to scale, right? But then X on the, you press the letter X afterwards, so scale on the X axis. So there we go, we have a bond. Um, we can just move it, so we can click G to grab it to move, and then move it along the X axis. So there we go, now we have, a, I don't know, an atom and then a bond. So how would you rotate it? So right now when we try to rotate, and I'm rotating by pressing R, the R key, and then that rotates it like um, with reference to your camera. So if I'm over here, then it rotates in a different way. But uh, enough said. Uh, if you want to rotate in like um, 360 degrees kind of, you'd double tap R and you get this like green and red arrows. And now you can see I can rotate in basically any direction, but it's not rotating relative to the atom. The trick I found was if you, let me just undo that for a bit. Uh, the trick I found is you have to go over here and you have to click active element. So what's the active element in Blender? So you can see over here when I highlight stuff, one is red, one is orange. Um, let's say I have another bond. Uh, and the way I was able to move my camera is I, I used a numpad. So um, a numpad is actually the, the thing on the side of the keyboard and you can actually uh, get a substitute in Blender. Uh, there's like a, a numpad emulation. I don't use it, but you can uh, if you don't have a numpad. But if I click the, if I click seven on the numpad, I can move up to this top view. If I click shift D to duplicate, I can get a new bond and I can just move it over here to the side. So you can see when I highlight stuff, there's some that are red and some are orange. Okay, that's important. So if I click this and then this, right? And the way I'm able to select multiple items is by, uh, if I, once I start, once I click and I click shift and I'm holding shift right now and I press another object, this becomes the active element. And if I rotate, you can see I'm rotating across the bond. And this is amazing because now I can effectively model a bunch of things. Uh, how? So let me go over here and let's say I want to move this guy over here like this. And um, let's say I want to get another one. So I click shift D to duplicate, but I just place it back to where it was. And then I grab that central atom and I rotate it. Now I have trigonal planar geometry and this is so much easier. So let's say I want to make something like a, a nitrogen atom. Uh, well, I would just rotate. It's kind of tricky sometimes, but you just have to play around with it. So I'll just grab, rotate downwards and grab. So you'd have to grab this one, the bond, and then the atom. You have to rotate it downwards a bit. And you can see over there, we can add some lone pairs. So not circle, but sphere. Uh, just shrink it down. And then if you want to move, you just click G and you can move it. And there we go. We have some atom. Uh, we have a nitrogen atom connected to, let's say, three hydrogens. We have ammonia now, especially if there were uh, little balls over there um, to signify hydrogen. So how would we put high little hydrogen balls at the end of these uh, bonds uh, instead of just leaving them blank? Uh, well, uh, what one can do is add, add a sphere, shrink it down a bit just because hydrogen is always small. And what you what this is the only tedious part I found that you actually have to like press G to grab and move your uh, the the ball over to where you want it to be. But you can see over here, I'm moving it and it looks like it's in the correct spot. But when I move into a different view, you can see it doesn't look like that at all. But if I click one on the numpad, it looks perfectly fine. But if I click three, which is a different view, we have to actually place it back. So over here, I'm just placing it again. I'm just placing it. It looks fine. But when I click seven, everything still looks fine. And then if you if it looks fine in one, three and seven, then you're fine overall. And this one should actually be a little bit like this. So you can see I'm just selecting and now I'm able to move that the atom and the bond over to someplace else. And if you're if you're like if you really want perfection, you can spend hours doing this. But I really don't care if st stuff is like slightly tilted like that. Um, that doesn't bother me a lot. So I don't mind that. And I just keep on modeling without it. And there you go, you can start to model stuff, but you might want colors because 
uh, you might want to add colors to your thing. Uh, that's totally fine. How would you add colors? So you have to go over here to the shading tab, just click new and just click this copy button a bunch of times. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to name something like white. Uh, you can also name it by Adam. Um, that's not an issue. So uh, let's say nitrogen and we'll say hydrogen, right? Uh, I guess you could also do the element name. That's, that's a bit easier. Uh, nitrogen, um, let's say lone pairs as well. Uh, so I'm naming these materials based on what I want them to be used for. So for example, over here, white will just be used for bonds. And let's say uh, for hydrogen, I guess hydrogen is also white. Let's say for lone pairs, I want it to be yellow. Now you can see I'm, I selected the wrong thing. So I'd have to go over here and so, like I would have to physically select which atom or bond I want this color and then I have to click a lone pair. Uh, that's a bit tedious, but I guess um, that's a bit tedious. But when you shift D to duplicate these lone pairs also keep that material so that's just something to keep in mind and let's say i want the nitrogen to be blue because it usually is i would go to my nitrogen material and i would change this color so i would go to the base color which is part of this principal bsdf so you don't have to worry about what that is if you're a chemistry student but just know that you can change the color and there you go you can start to model stuff in blender which is pretty cool because uh, my modeling kit doesn't come with a lot of atoms and i would prefer a lot of atoms also if you want to change the color or i guess the the way you're looking at it, you could press Z uh, or Z uh, to change which would, uh, which uh, a shading view you're looking at, but material preview works perfectly fine. And if you want to, you could also do random colors, but that makes it like impossible to figure out what's going on. So yeah, that's the basics of modeling um, in Blender. If you want to do double or triple bonds, what you would have to do, I can just delete this. Uh, uh, deleting bonds is as simple as clicking X and then delete, or if you have the delete key on your keyboard, you can press that too. But uh, what you, what you want to do for double or triple bonds, let's say you have a single bond over here, what you want to do is just click shift D to duplicate and move your double bond wherever you want and then uh, move the corresponding bond that you duplicated from to the side and there you go, you got a double bond. And of course, if you make sure you have active element selected up here, uh, just make sure that's selected and then select the central atom you want to rotate around, you can do that. And um, just a quick tip, uh, if you want to rotate the entire molecule, what you can do is you can select everything and then select the atom that you want to rotate around. The ability to rotate your molecule around in 3D space and actually view it from multiple different angles and get like a good idea of what's going on. And, it, and especially this will help when it comes to chiral centers and whatnot. It's very similar to these uh, websites like PubCam where you can like view 3D molecules. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. It's very similar to these like online websites where it's very similar to these uh, 